So thank you so much for for taking the time to do this interview and everything. I'm I'm very excited. Of course, of yeah. course. Yeah, it's all about you and your journey in music uh, and how you got to where you are now. I was just listening to um, some of the covers that you have on on your uh, Spotify. Oh, and really? The, the Young Blood cover is amazing. Oh my God! Thank you. I that actually just came out. Oh, it did. I yeah. I just I was like. What is this the 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 same young blood song I'm thinking it is? And yeah, I was like, whoa, yeah, it's a it's it's incredible. You, you did oh an incredible God. job. Thanks. Yeah, I have a good story behind that, but I'll save it for the chat so I don't give it away. Okay, well we're rolling now, so let's <laughs> let's get into okay, it. Okay, cool. Just let me know when you want to do the intro and. Oh, I don't even intro. I just we're we're already. Oh, okay, over. cool. Don't pay attention to anything I just said. <laughs> <laughs> we can take I, didn't that even, I didn't know. Yeah. No. Yeah. Some people will do the like. So everybody. No. Nah. Yeah. Yeah. We we keep it cash on on, on our I show. I love it. I love it. So okay. So born and raised in San Diego. Um. Obviously, there's a lot of music happening in San Diego. Did you grow up going to like House of Blues or was that even around yet? Because like for I'm I'm. I don't know how old, I think I'm much older than you. So uh, <laughs> when I was growing up, there was like very few local sh venues. There was like the Epicenter Mir Mesa had some shows. There's a place in um, Claremont called The Scene. And there's like the Che Cafe, but there wasn't a whole lot of all ages shows. So I don't know where did you grow up in like going to see live bands? And if so, where were you checking them out? So, you know, growing up in Vista, Vista is a very robust theater community oh so is i i grew up going to the moonlight amphitheater to go oh, see concerts sure. and theater shows uh it's it's a beautiful outdoor venue in north county san diego uh, i felt so lucky to have been able to to grow up in a community that was so arts rich you know mm -hmm. what i mean sure uh, Vista is definitely one of those like bright spots in san diego for sure mm -hmm. and and of course like you know i go to shows throughout San Diego. I go see theater shows. You know, when I was younger and growing up there, like theater was my whole entire life. And that's how I got into music. Oh, ultimately. okay. Yeah. So I started working in professional theater when I was 10 um, at the Lawrence Welk Resort. Oh, in, really? Uh, Escondido, yeah, California. Okay. In yeah, San Diego I know County. Lawrence Welk. Very cool. Yeah, I was a kid doing the theater thing, and I, I did a bunch of shows throughout Southern California, LA, you know, Los Angeles, uh, Orange County, mm -hmm. and then of course San Diego. And then through all of that, ended up meeting the people that would go on to produce my music as a teenager. Really? Which is wild. It's the <laughs> craziest story. I was in this like random open call for a project, and it was at a recording studio. And I walked in and I was 13, I performed and I, I got the part. And then I ended up growing this relationship with this family that owns this recording studio in Los Angeles. It's called Studio City Sound. <laughs> and, okay. Um, they're all from San Diego too. Wow. It's I didn't wild. That. It was okay. a wild story. You know, like one of those, like the stars are aligning moments. Sure. And you're like, oh, this is meant to be. And that same family introduced me to my husband. Oh, wow. <laughs> Which is even crazier. So um, I definitely call the studio home. I've been working in and out of recording studios since I was 13. It's wow. It's been a, a crazy journey for me. I'm 28 now. So okay. um, I'm relatively young in the grand scheme very, of life. Yeah, very young in the grand scheme of life. Yeah, but I've like I've been around for a minute and I'm really thankful for the opportunities that I've been able to experience i mean some of the things i look back on it and i'm like i was 15 and i got to do that like are you kidding me and um the whole process like when you grow up in a studio and in that environment it just makes it so much easier to hone your craft because you're listening to yourself all the time you're around right. professional musicians all the time session musicians songwriters producers and so it was literally the best experience i could ever hope for in my that, entire life. <laughs> that is amazing. Um, well, with that, so very young, you were into theater and singing. Where, when did you start singing? Was that the first kind of instrument, I guess, that you learned? Did you pick up piano or anything at a very early age, guitar or anything like that either? Yeah, you know, it's, I don't even remember when I started to sing. It was sure. 
before I could even talk, honestly. Like I would <laughs> sing books instead of speak them. Oh, really? That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, my grandma would be like, okay, now your turn. And then I would just sing pages <laughs> instead of speaking them. So my, my family, like my parents knew at a very, very early age that this is what I really wanted to do in mm -hmm. some way, shape or form. My, both my parents are really musical. Um, my mom sang. She's incredible. She doesn't sing enough. Um, I want to do a duet with her one day. My dad. I was going to say you should. Oh, he does. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And my brothers play the saxophone and, and one of my brothers is in the U S army right now as a saxophone player in the army band. So, wow. That's an achievement. I, oh, that is, that's really incredible. Yeah. We are like a crazy musical family. We definitely like feed off of one another and I'll gig with my brother. Probably one of the covers that you listen to on Spotify from me, um, has my brother featured on it. Cause I, I have a Which bunch one? of love. It's, um, the John Mayer one. I don't trust myself with loving you. Oh, okay. Okay. There's a saxophone part in that song that he came in and he played live with me. It was right after he finished boot camp. Oh, and, wow. and he came in and he just, he played the part. It's so magical to be able to make music with your family. Yeah. It's such a beautiful thing. And I'm, I'm a big fan of, family bands too. I mean, everything uh -huh. from like the Jackson five to, I mean, the Heim sisters, they're, Oh, sure. They're incredible. And like a huge inspiration of mine. And mm -hmm. my husband actually went to school with SD Heim at UCLA. Did he? So, wow. Yeah. I just, I think family bands just have a really good vibe. And so mm -hmm. I do what I can to make music with my family. But, you know, as I mentioned before, like this has been a crazy journey, you know, from, you know, doing professional theater from the time I was 10, you know, I wasn't, instead of my elective, I was like on a stage and that, that was my life. Sure. And then at like 13, I, um, you know, had this chance encounter at this recording studio and ended up putting out music. And um, how did, the, how did this, this encounter happen? So I'm, I'm so you were, <laughs> were, were, you were singing in, in musical theater and then you, you said you did like an audition or something. You got an opportunity to, to, to sing there. Like what happened? Yeah. Yeah. So I walked into an open call that happened mm -hmm. to be held at this recording studio. It was for, what was it for? Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. It was, it's, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> so there's this like eighties cult classic film called teen witch and it stars Robin lively. It's like, always on ABC family. It's like one of those like Halloween movies. And it's okay. about this girl who on her 16th birthday, she like, she gets these like powers and she wants to be like a rock star and all this stuff. It's, it's a cult classic film from that era. Okay. And um, I ended up getting the part that I auditioned for, which was Shaun of the rock star, which was like in the dream sequences and all this stuff. Oh, and cool. it was like really, cause I love rock music. I, I mean, I, there's a lot of rock influence in what I do and it, it's been that way ever since I was pretty young. Um, mm -hmm. Like I grew up listening to like Pink and like Kelly Clarkson and sure. just so many like Ann Wilson of Heart. Um, oh yeah, and talk so, about vocalists too. They oh they yeah, just to. like I mean badass female <laughs> vocalists. I mean I was like sure. five in my mom's car listening to divas live <laughs> that, that was me um cool. and i feel really lucky that i i have a mom who's a vocalist and who has great taste in singers um so yeah i get this i get this part uh, in team witch the musical and i i walk in the first day our rehearsals in that studio and i meet like all these other girls that are in it and so fast forward to today um, one of them is Lauren Patton, who is in Jagged Little Pill on Broadway. Wow. She's a quarantine Joe, character of Joe right now. She sings You Oughta Know. She's incredible. And we're, we're all like 13 at the time. And okay. then my, my other friend, um, Sarah Nimitz, was in the room too. We're still good friends today. And she toured with um, Postmodern Jukebox and she does Scary Pockets. And she's like an incredible vocalist. So, I mean, walking into that room and we were doing this like random musical project it really like changed <laughs> my life I mean I it grew me as a musician I met some of my best friends in the whole world um and it really put me on this path from going to theater which I still do today but to mm -hmm. really becoming like an artist and a songwriter so I went on to record um a bunch of different um original songs uh, for movie soundtracks 
oh. um, through the, through my um, my work at the studio. And so I was like 15, 16. I, I had songs in um, a few Fox films, uh, Moondance Alexander and the Flicka 2, which is based on, you know, the Flicka film, which I think yeah. Tim McGraw was in the first one. And then in the one that I had music in, it was Clint Black. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, it was super cool. At I Clint 15 too, you're running these, you're, were you getting like pitch lists and stuff or like, how are you able to, to do that? I just, I was working with the right songwriters and the right team and I was incredibly lucky and it was a team that was entirely from San Diego basically so, That's so San cool. Diego's in LA like we stand um, I love that I love so, that yeah and then then I, I did some stuff for Marley and Me Too the sequel to the the movie that makes everybody cry of course um, I, I joke that I've I've had music in um, dance movies, horses, uh, or movies about horses and <laughs> um, and dogs. So it's like animals or dance, uh, and it's it's been this this crazy journey. But um, what has really been um, the biggest? I don't want to say it's a challenge, but um, is transitioning into who I am as an artist as an adult. Because when you're in this business as a child. And as a teenager, it's like you're still searching and trying to figure out who you are. Mm -hmm. And um, I released a single when I was 17 that um, was in the top 40 charts of media base. So it was like on top 40 radio. Now. Oh, yeah. Top 40 radio. Of course. Yeah, I came yeah. from radio. I used to be on a station in San Diego. <laughs> oh, no way. I love that. So I had a song yeah, yeah. That, that did really well. Um, it was with my my San Diego fam from the studio. And we, we put this song together and it really uh took off it was on like radio disney rip radio disney wow i will i'm so sad that radio disney is no more um i know that, what happened that was my childhood disney. yeah i know i know it's crazy we have serious radio and in, uh, in one of our cars and like one day it was started saying like you know disney radio will be like they were like announcing that it was going away and i'm like huh that's weird are they like revamping it and then it was just like gone. yeah it's gone i mean that was my childhood right there and it was the first time that i heard myself sing on the radio when i was 17. i remember wow. i was i was at high school and I, I was rehearsing for like a, like a school play or something like that. And my mom called me and she said, come out, your song's on the radio. And I went and I sat in the car. And it being like a teenager, it's just like a wild experience to that is cool. have that happen. And then you're just like online and like people are making karaoke tracks to your songs. And you're like, what? <laughs> like, what is this world? <laughs> right. or, or people like I've had friends at karaoke, like screenshot the song <laughs> in the karaoke book. Oh, really? <laughs> So it's, like, still, it's, oh still jam. it's still a jam. It's still a karaoke jam to this day. I guess it is. I guess it is. I always laugh because I'm like, I don't know. It's it's just weird. I, I'm i just out, out here making music because I just, I really want to like impact people's sure. lives, you know? Because well, like what? my whole... Go ahead. Yeah. Well, I was going to ask what song is it? If you, unless you don't, unless it's oh, buried yeah. in the, in the, in oh, the no, archives. You, people that are listening can look it up. It's... It, it was 11 years ago, so right. <laughs> I'm just curious. I've grown so much. Um, it's called "Girl to Change Your World," okay, and uh, it's like a like an uber like pop song. It's like a la like a Demi Lovato type thing. It was Rad. that era. Um, yeah, so that that song went out, and you know, it was a crazy whirlwind experience, and I got approached by a few labels. Um, They're major major labels, but they didn't. Um, the conversations weren't fruitful. And, you know, it was honestly like the best thing that could have ever happened to me in the long run. Right. Because, I, you know, I just don't know at 17 if I was really ready for that. And if I was really, um, if I had really like grown into myself as an artist. Mm -hmm. um, because I think there's, there's definitely a point where you go from, at least when you're really young like that, like people are, people are writing music for you. People are, um, you know, they're very hands-on in the producing process, but there's a point where you take everything that you've learned in an environment like that and you, you build something that is completely and authentically you. And that takes time. And um, for me, I'm just, I'm glad I had that time because now the music that I'm releasing and my current artist project, which is like Heather All Grown Up, um, is it's a commentary on happiness. And it's coming from this place of 
you know, somebody who's lived just a little bit more life now um, as an adult. I've been married for five years. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, Studio City Sound, for finding me my husband. <laughs> um, yeah, but, you know, I, I had to do a little bit of living to really hone who I am as an artist and, and my craft as a vocalist. I play bass, too. Um, you know, it's it's been a journey. So... Mm -hmm. Uh, my current artist project is a commentary on happiness. So mm -hmm. um, anything that I'm releasing that's part of it within the last like year, year and a half is um, written from that perspective. It's, it's positive yeah. vibes, it's good vibes, it's optimism because I consider myself an eternal optimist. Um, I always really try to see the good in situations, even if they're, you know, difficult like life is so hard sometimes and and you know i think that we all can of course relate to that after this past year oh um, sure it's hard to see the silver lining um in in times like these and you know i think that there's a lot of hope right now mm -hmm. in the world as we as we come out of um everything that's happened and i just felt like it was the perfect time for me to put out music that would lift people up um, i like but, that but in an authentic way, you know, because like there, there are songs that are written to be happy. Just, yeah, just because like some bubble gummy, like, pop yeah, song. exactly. But it's like, for me, it's so true to who I am as a person mm -hmm. that I'm just taking, I'm taking how I see the world and the light that I see it in. And I'm, I'm putting it into music and I'm hoping that eventually, you know, people will listen and that it's all going to rub off on them and maybe change somebody's perspective or um, help them see, see the light in times that are, that are pretty dark and dim. Mm -hmm. um, so with that said, it, back in September, I released this song called Shine. Um, it basically, the way I can say it is it was like the transition from young artist Heather to artist Heather now. And the, okay. the, the whole music video is, is a, parody semi-parody on never been kissed that oh rom -com. yeah the, sure sure <laughs> <laughs> so it's like um people have told me my entire life that i look like lily sobieski um i can who see plays, that. Like, a nerdy girl in that in that movie a I'm, little bit i'm a nerd you know I, i've been getting that like since i was a child in, in the grocery store people have said <laughs> that i could be her sister so i thought i was being really funny that is pretty so I, good. I like copied her looks from the movie. Got it. Yeah. And, and like made this video, um, which is all, <laughs> it's, a, it's a coming of age song. And uh, so I put that out and um, there was a really great response to it. Uh -huh. uh, and I think people just, it's, you know, I think artists have songs that really define them and define who they are um, as artists. And, and for me, like shine, which is the name of the song, um, that's what this song was for me because it, it was some of my most honest work that I've put out. Um, and I, I really was able to authentically let my, my personality shine, <laughs> if sure. you will, out yeah. there. So this next song that I have coming out on April 23rd mm -hmm. is called A Little Closer to Happy. And this is more of a realistic view of happiness. So it's... You know, happiness isn't perfect, right? Like sure. love isn't perfect. Um, success isn't perfect. Um, I wanted to really hone in on the imperfections, you know, that, that lie in that journey of happiness. And I want to let people know that you can still be a happy person, but not be happy all the time. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. Because happiness is a journey. It's this path. And we're always just taking, as long as you're taking steps forward, you're getting a little closer to happy every single day. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, that's the whole concept of the song. That's the vibe. And, you know, naturally being from San Diego, being from Southern California, I lived like 10 minutes from the beach growing up. Mm -hmm. sure. um, but like, you could either go to the beach or the mall, like, or right. Mexico. <laughs> or, Me or Mexico. <laughs> but, like, but when I was like growing up in San Diego, it was like a tad dangerous at the border. So like uh, okay. I never went to TJ because like <laughs> there was some gnarly stuff going on. Sure. Um, but naturally, since I'm from SoCal, I was born and raised there. Um, the whole music video that I'm putting out with this song 
it's all Cali vibes. It's, I love that. You know, whenever I'm like having trouble with something or if I'm in a contemplative mood or if I'm, I'm struggling to hold on to my happiness, I always go to the beach. Like that's my place. Okay. So I'll just go sit on the beach and I'll, you know, write music or um, just sit and think and like listen to the waves and look out. It's, it's the main thing that got me through everything that's gone on in the pandemic. I mean, it's been so hard on so many different people and I'm, I'm so thankful for what I do have. But, um, you know, since this song is, it's really like the realest view of happiness, um, I wanted to like incorporate that into like my whole vision for the song. Um, and, you know, there are just so many cool things about like growing up in California, like from like going to like bonfires, like at the beach, like, um, you know, living 10 minutes from the water and you can just like drive over with your with your best friend i had a, a friend in high school who had a, like a 1980s like mustang and we would just <laughs> drive with the top down we were like 16 and we're like sure. let's go to the beach <laughs> and that was that was my that was my uh life like growing up in san diego and it's um being in la i'm like not far from the water now either okay um and i i love ventura i love mm -hmm. um santa barbara but you know, I just wanted to give people a taste of that Southern California lifestyle because, you know, I, I hope that when people listen to the song that it does make them happier, does make them shine. And, you know, what what a better like parallel than, you know, that been... Southern California vibe, you know? Right. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's my my whole vision for it. And, you know, I'm excited for people to see the music video because um I've always been into like metaphors and like figures of speech. Like there was a period of time in my life when I was a, like a music journalist. Oh, uh, it was interesting. Okay. LA times media group in the OC. Wow. So I got to interview like all my um, idols. So like I did an interview with like Ann Wilson and like Martina McBride and like wow. all these, all these like badass ladies mm -hmm. and gents um, that I've, that I just looked up to for, for years. And you know, those conversations like grew me as a person and they grew me as an artist, like being able to have that type of access when you're like, I was like 19, 20, like right. doing, doing these interviews. And I, you know, fell into that position because I just, I wanted to write about what I knew mm -hmm. and what I knew was music, what I knew was performing and theater. And so, um, you know, it's just, whenever I, whenever I write my own music, I'm just, de I'm definitely like a sucker for lyrics. Yeah. Um, that's everything to me. But when I write lyrics, it's, um, I want to make the words accessible to people, you mm -hmm. know, for me, it's mm -hmm. all about what is the most like efficient way to say something, to convey the emotion. Sure. You know, and cause I'm, you know, when, when you, when you work as a journalist for a while, you've, that's the way that you're kind of like taught to think and you, you want to economize your words and you want to get to the point and do right. all that. And as much as I love poetry, like, I do. Less you know? is more. It's like, you got to get to the point real quick or you're going to lose. Yeah. People. <laughs> like like that's, that's my approach like to, to songwriting in general. Cause it's, it's all about like, I'm a very uh, passionate uh, vocalist. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of, a lot of emotion in, in what I do. And I take a lot of pride in that because there are a lot of different types of vocalists. Like there are, like the, the power singers, there are singers that, that can riff all day and have crazy agility. And then there are um, singers that just like s sing from the heart and they may not like, there are a lot of artists out there that are like very emotional vocalists that maybe they don't consider themselves like a singer first, but like, I love their voice because of all that emotion that's packed into it. And they're just mm -hmm. so good at unpacking it for the listener. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, when I write, I'm I'm writing from that spot. I'm I'm really emotional with what I do and I I want people to feel something. Like I'm I don't I mean I make music for me. Yeah, I think we all should make music for ourselves, but <laughs> but at the same time I'm I'm not making music for me. I'm making music for other people and I'm taking my experiences um and maybe like epiphanies, you know, that I've I've gone through and I'm I'm taking that and using that as inspiration in my music. So mm -hmm. I can hopefully pass along something that's meaningful to somebody. Sure. Because for me, it's about, 
it's about helping people and in that way like leaving a legacy mm -hmm. with the music that I put out into the world and like my whole goal is I just I just want people to feel something you know it's not about um like how many runs you can do or you know it's <laughs> it, that's not and I'm, I'm a professional vocalist in LA too I do I do session work okay or like for tv shows and yeah you were a um, part of a tv show right I was well that that was like on screen I do off screen stuff too okay but um the I was just on season one of Fox's I can see your voice mm -hmm. tell me about that was that cool it's a wild tv show I definitely recommend it um, you know, just get like a good bottle of wine or whatever your drink of choice is and um, watch it on Hulu because that's that's where it is right now. So the premise of the show is that um, there are six secret voices in each episode and the secret voices have their own pseudonym. So you don't go by your name on the show. You have a pseudonym. So huh. um, mine was the tap dancer. Okay. Uh, because, you know, I, I've actually been tap dancing longer, th longer than I've been singing. Um, oh, interesting. My oh, yeah. older son t was in tap. Uh, oh, no way. Younger. Yeah, he did all the, the different. And now my younger son's in hip hop and some sort of tumbling. Dance. He's only about to be five. So uh, he's in some other sort of it's like more of a tumbling class. And then he does the hip hop dance. But uh, my older son yeah. did, did tap and jazz and ballet and all that and all that so that is so great i mean i the the way that i got into tap is like this crazy story um growing up i had this condition with my um hips it's called a fibular antiversion and it just causes your feet to like turn in it's like pigeon toedness oh yeah I, they yeah. thought that my younger son had that yeah so like mine was pretty like intense and my family um, took me to the doctor and they're like, well, we could do the surgery where they have to like shave your bone. It's like real gnarly for like a kid yeah. to like go through and like listen to that conversation, even Isn't if you're there really young. a brace that they can kind of- Yeah, they can do that to. too. But they were like, you know, you could put her in, in ballet and see if that helps. So they put me in this like ballet tap combo class. And I like, I- came for the tap and I got through the ballet. Got um, it. <laughs> my dad, my dad's a drummer. So it's like the tap thing just like, came oh, after the, like the rhythms sure. like in my blood and I play bass too, which I, obviously I didn't then, but I'm very like percussive and <laughs> everything. I you do didn't play of. bass at that. Age. I did it at, th <laughs> at like four. I know. I wish, I wish I had started then. Honestly, it would have been incredible. Be like I did not Randy have Jackson. the, I literally, I did not have the attention span at that age. Um, <laughs> Who does, so, well, yeah, basically, I I got into tap because um, we were trying to correct an issue with my body, and um, I ended up falling falling in love with the whole art form and the rhythm of tap dancing, and it's kind of been this parallel path with everything that I've been doing musically. Um, I've I've never stopped tap dancing. So uh, when I found out I was going to be on the show, I I asked the producers like, "What is my pseudonym going to be?" And they're like, "You're going to be the tap dancer, like." And you're going to tap on national TV. So, oh. and sing. Not not at the same time, but simultaneously. Okay. Um, sure. So, you know, like natural, I grew up in theater. So like, that's something that you do a lot of, like being a tap dancer is something that's like pretty common. Yeah, if you're, you're like, in no music. sweat, I got yeah, this. Yeah, <laughs> it's, 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 it's a usual thing. Like I've, I've done like big tap shows, like 42nd Street. So, but doing it for, for TV, it's very different, um, you know, the, the people that operate the cameras on those shows are like brilliant. Like they know all the angles. So um, <laughs> I have like gone off on this like complete um, diversion, but I can see your voice. You've got, six, <laughs> you've got six secret voices. Each one has a pseudonym. I was the tap dancer. I think some of the other ones on my episode were um, the chef, the phlebotomist. I mean, just the wild, the fashion designer, <laughs> okay. like there were so many crazy personalities. So nobody knows, like the viewers and the celebrities that are kind of like this panel, they, they don't know who's a good singer and who's like posing as a good singer, but is actually a bad singer. Oh, so, that's yeah. interesting. Okay. Yeah. And the show came from Korea originally from South Korea. So and you're like lip syncing? And doing like I don't know I guess I don't quite understand. Yeah, so, so there's a series. You're... Yeah, there's like this series of challenges that you go through. So okay. they introduce you, 
and they've got this like panel of celebrities and they've got like a contestant who's playing to win money, right? And the celebrities are there to like advise the contestant, like what they think. And so like the celebrities on my episode were Yvette Nicole Brown, um, Cheryl Hines from Curb Your Enthusiasm, Bob Saget from Full House. Oh, I love him. Oh, Bob. It's like, hey, dad, what's up? <laughs> yeah. I grew up watching yeah. that show. Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome and uh the, the musical superstar on my show um was pat monahan of train who okay. is a big big influence of mine really and he, another californian oh, yeah. is he san francisco i think so yeah yeah, yeah. and um uh Ad adrian houghton um who is in like the cheetah girls and all that stuff um, okay i believe she's on like i think it's the view Hopefully I'm saying that right. But she's awesome. She's Not super sure. talented. <laughs> okay. um, yeah, I think it's the, the view or the talk or, you know, one of, one of those. Um, the, the something. <laughs> those daytime talk yeah, shows. Yeah, daytime you know? talk shows, sure. Yeah, so so they were the celebrity panel. We had this um, contestant who was, she's like a single mom. Um, she was playing to like win some money to like buy a house for her and her daughter. It was like really sweet. So like, she's just trying to guess the whole time. We've got these rounds. Like first oh, round. So is you're not you, okay. Uh, now I'm trying to figure it out. So there, there's a person there that's like yeah. trying to guess which one of you, yeah, are the real, yeah, deal. the real deal. Yeah, got and, it. Okay, I thought and, like you all had a sob story or something like American Idol. And oh then, no, no, no! It's like so different from like American Idol. So got it's like. It we're like up there on a platform and like we get introduced and then we do like a lip sync challenge and we get up there and we lip sync. And so the, the singers that are good are lip syncing to their own, their own pre-recorded voices. Okay. The ones that are bad are lip syncing to a session singer. Got so, it. So yeah, it's, it's wild. So like they go through those rounds, they eliminate people and then they have like interrogation and like this thing called secret studio where they like, pitch correct your voice like in the studio but they show a clip and you, oh. they have to guess from the pitch correction if you're actually a singer um yeah it is so wild and the goal is for the for the contestant to win a hundred thousand dollars at the end they want to have a good singer left over to sing with the music superstar who is pat monahan of train on okay. my episode so pat's like sitting there and he's like Please be good. Please be good. Because right. like, you just wanted to sing with somebody good. Right, right. Of course. <laughs> so, um, you know, Pat was actually really good at guessing uh -huh. the entire time. Like his like gut instinct was really good. He was pretty much, I think he like picked out almost all of the singers, like the real singers. Um, but the, con the contestant doesn't have to listen to Pat or the celebrity um, uh, detectives, you know, they, they'll just end up making their own choice. So sure. um, when you're eliminated, you sing like a big song and it's a crazy moment. And my song on the show when I was eliminated was Young Blood by Five Seconds of Summer. Oh, OK. So there's a connection to the recording on online. Yeah, yeah. Got so it. Because you kill it on the I mean, I need to watch the show now. I, I'm going to do that like right after. Oh, amazing. Chat. On episode four, episode four, season okay. one. Got um, it. Ken Jung from The Hangover is the host. He's incredible. Oh, yeah, he's hilarious. I he's love him. He's so it. good. He's the best person, too. And uh, he's like, he was so supportive of all the singers on the show. Really? Um, oh my God. Like he just, this was like not your typical reality TV show experience. Mm -hmm. um, Cause like I did like the idol thing when I was 19, like I went to Hollywood week, like it was cool, you know, but oh, this, wow. this um, doing reality, t a different reality TV show 10 years later, like I had grown like so much and like Ken like creates a really awesome environment for everybody. So, That's cool. um, I was really happy with how it all rolled out. And so, yeah, I do Young Blood live and I like tap with it. Um, <laughs> on I have the to TV see show. this. Yeah, it's I'm, wild. I'm going to be watching it here very, very soon. Yeah. And it's like, it's like an indie, more like, it's very, it's more rocked out, like the version that I did. And then I just released a studio version mm -hmm. um, that I put together with my uh, producer, Dan Saden, and that's on Spotify. Mm -hmm. um so you can go listen to that it's pretty wild i play bass on the studio version and oh really uh, yeah and there are even more tap parts i did all the vocal arranging on it i was gonna um, say there's a lot of there's a lot of cool vocal parts thanks yeah that's my i'm just such a studio nerd like you know that's like where i grew up so um i just i have so much fun like putting that type of uh 
you know, music together for the fan. The fans were so excited when I released the studio version because, you know, it's a moment that I'm never going to forget. And it's a moment that people remember me by. Um, and what's really cool now is like, you know, this show brought my music and my voice to so many new people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm excited to be putting out this new song um, because it, it kind of has like young blood vibes a little bit. Like it's a little, um, it's, it's definitely like indie rock influenced, like sounds a lot like Heim. Um, for those of you that didn't catch it the first time, it's called A Little Closer to Happy and it's out April 23rd mm -hmm. um, on streaming services. And I'm also putting out a music video. Um, but it's definitely got that like young blood vibe to it. Um, my voice is very earthy, you know, mm -hmm. so it's, it's also got those elements too, but it's been such a wild, wild journey. And, um, it's crazy having done a TV show during a pandemic. I mean, right. Insane. Like I had, <laughs> I had, I was like, when I got the call, I was like, you're shooting. <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly. They, like, I'm not singing into a Zoom call or... I'm like, not. It's not a Zoom, a Zoom yeah. TV show, you know, right, but right. it happened. And, you know, I was, I had gotten the original call back in March, right before the shutdown, literally the week before the world shut down. And I didn't even know that they were going to continue on with it. And then mm -hmm. I got a call in July when things started to open back up a little bit more. And um, they were just so incredible and s made it feel so safe for everybody that was involved in this. So I honestly can't wait for season two. They, I think they just uh, finished filming that. Wow. Um, yeah, awesome. it's going to be wild. I, I love guessing myself. <laughs> <laughs> and I, li I live tweet it too. So oh, people, that's cool. People keep me honest, you know. That's um, awesome. But yeah, it's wild. And I, I'm just, I'm so thankful for that experience and like how I, I grew up and everything. Like, like when I was 13, like I, so I didn't say this earlier on, but I, I do play bass obviously, but I was inspired to play bass um, by Sting. Um, oh, from okay. The police. Yeah. Um, because when I was 13, I had the chance to, to meet him. And, really? Yeah, and I, I was the opening soloist at a UNICEF benefit concert in Beverly Hills that he was headlining. So Wow. Yeah, so I met him and, and Natalie Cole like all in one night and like meeting Sting like really changed my life because um I saw He's him so on awesome. stage playing <laughs> bass and singing yeah. and I was like, I I should do that, you know? Yeah, and, yeah. So, I mean, I just look at like my journey, like from, you know, being a tap dancer at a really young, young age and being in theater and then, um, you know, being inspired by Sting to play bass. And like, now I look at my music and it combines like all that stuff. Like it mm -hmm. includes the vocals, it includes the bass playing, like the tap dancing, all my um, artist music, it, it all has like hidden tap dance tracks in it. Oh, like even, really? even the cover of young blood that i put out there are hidden well some of the tap tracks aren't very hidden um because <laughs> they mirror what i did on the show um uh -huh. but there's like there are layers and layers of tap parts in the chorus of that wow. song now i have to re-listen to it yeah and see if you can pick them out so the hidden ones are in the chorus um but it's it's just been a wild journey and to see like all of those interests like come together into this like crazy neat little package that i mm. i never could have dreamed up you know it's it's wild how everything goes around you know mm -hmm. it just like sure. comes together in like a way that you would never expect um so i'm just excited for the future to be honest like i'm i'm excited for this new music that i'm putting out uh -huh. I'm, I'm working on even more songs um, i was gonna ask that is is this gonna be part of uh like a full like an ep or record or i mean it seems like you have this happy you know idea going is it gonna be like a collection of songs or what are you thinking i think that's a that's a great question you know it's the million dollar question <laughs> i mean ideally like i could see myself putting together this music and like a themed EP or album. I think mm -hmm. that would make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. um, I've just been releasing singles for now because I, I'm frankly like very picky about 
the songwriting and the songs that I put out and I, I want it to be authentic to that message. And, you know, sometimes I just write sad songs. So sure. I've got to continue. That, I'm going to write happier songs. That will songs. make it on the happy EP. <laughs> yeah. It's, Maybe it's, you can have a B-side, the sad EP. The, the sad EP, the happy <laughs> EP. It's just... It's why I mean I've I've written stuff I have stuff on my Spotify that's definitely I mean Youngblood isn't a happy song but um, I I definitely <laughs> right. have like a femme fatale like side of what I do as well because I'm I'm I don't know I'm a very like deep emotional person like I'm in my feelings you know I'm happy but I'm not like happy all the time but sure um like I, I wrote this song and it, it's actually a live version that was recorded at YouTube space is on my Spotify um and it's called you made me hate love songs and it's okay. like the anti it's like the anti <laughs> I love, I love, well, yeah, and I'm looking at some of your covers. I'm like, the first cut is the deepest. Like, okay, that Cat Stevens song's a little, uh, I know, <laughs> a little dicey I, when it comes to being happy. <laughs> I love, I love the Cheryl Crow version. Yeah, and that's why I say like my artist project is a commentary on happiness because like a lot of the stuff that I've done before up until now has been, you know, it's been like. It's been some femme fatale stuff. Like I'm, I just love like rock music. So naturally like that stuff sometimes isn't as happy. So, and I, I just sing so many different things. Like as a session singer, I'll say that one more time because my doorbell just rang. <laughs> <laughs> um, hello, who is it? <laughs> hello, like who's here? Like COVID pandemic. Pizza. Um, right, hopefully, you know, as, um, as a session singer, as a professional vocalist, you kind of have to sing everything. So um, it's like a blessing and a curse because mm. you you try to learn everything that you can and you got to sing in all the genres, but then it's easy to have an identity crisis. Um, and I think over this past like year and a half, I really figured out what my mission as an artist is and what the, the most authentic um, presentation of myself is, um, in the space. So, I mean, if you follow me on Instagram or, you know, Twitter, like you're just going to see like good vibes all day. Like I'm all about like, you know, tweet, I tweet like inspirational messages. Like at people, like, uh, like I do that like five times a day sometimes. And, <laughs> and awesome. the people that follow me love that. And they're all about like the good vibes. Um, so I think that people know when they, when they come to me or if they follow me or listen to my music, you know, that's, that's what I'm going to give them. Sure. Um, and, and I just want people to know that if they need like a little bit of like sunshine and good vibes in their life, like this is where they should come. I love that. I love that. And thank you so much, Heather, for doing this. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. And it's, it's always a pleasure to talk to a fellow San Diegan. Of course we got to stick together. We have to. You know, I have one more question for you, though. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, um, I was just going to say, do you have any advice for aspiring artists? Woo! Do I? <laughs> um, I have a lot of advice for aspiring artists. Let's so, hear it. Let's hear it. Um, I would say, like, be kind to yourself mm -hmm. because each and every day you're growing. And, um, you know, I even look at my journey from the time I was 13 to now. And um, I've grown so much. So just be kind to yourself throughout the process and, and try to, you know, write music or put out music that is authentic to you and not what you think other people want to hear from you. And I know that sounds like a little cliche and I've heard, you know, other people say that in interviews before, but I really do believe that because... And, and put out music that like when you sing it, like you, you just come alive and you just, it's, it's just makes you whole. Um, and I would say like, be patient because it's, I would say just be patient because it's a journey. <laughs> It's Somebody very, is very impatient at your door. Extremely <laughs> impatient. They want me to get off the Zoom, but I don't want to. Um, I gosh, love you it. You gotta love it. It's COVID. Like, like this, who's this ringing is, my doorbell right this now? This is my favorite, like, part of these interviews and the Zoom calls. <laughs> They're just like the most like real versions of people like yeah that was my doorbell yeah. <laughs> Whatever. aspiring artists don't answer your door during covid <laughs> yeah or if there you, you do go. wear your mask um 
Yeah, it's it's been a wild journey, but just be kind to yourself, be kind to others. Um, if, if people are really cool to you and help you out on your journey, like help people back, you know, because I do believe in good karma. And, um, you know, we all need to help each other out in this business because it's a hard one and it's even harder because of what has happened. So, you know, just spread those good vibes, um, be there for people, lift people up, say their name in rooms. Um, it's just gonna, it's gonna go a long way and we'll all get there together. Bring it back, bring it back.